Hi, how's it going? This is Resin of Conwood for YouTube. I literally for, almost forgot about this video. Um, <laughs> I'm doing a character retrospective on Maggie Evans. <sighs> so, Maggie. Played by actress Kathleen Lee Scott. I really love the fact that when we first meet Maggie, you know, she's in the diner. And she's standing behind the counter. And here's Kathleen Scott. She's wearing a blonde wig. And thank God they ditched that wig. Like seriously. But I loved her interaction with both characters who played her dad. Like the, it didn't feel like, you know, she didn't miss any beat at all with any of that. Which is amazing. Do I think Kathleen Lee Scott's uh, Maggie Evans really wanted Vicky to leave. I just don't think, you know, she understood why somebody would want to go work up in that house. You know, it's supposedly haunted. You know, the Collins family members do act a bit, you know, sort of kooky. And, you know, I could see why. You'd be like, hey, you need to take a look in that mirror. But and Maggie tells her, you need to take a little mirror, your hair is going to turn a shade of gray, a shade of gray or white. Um, I love the fact that Maggie Evans' father is a painter. So, Maggie actually knows that, you know, meets Burke before her dad does. And she reminds Burke of who she, who she was to him that, you know, hey, if you, you don't say nothing to me, I'm going to... And... She says to him about who she is, and she says about her basically her dad's drinking. He's sort of like, Wait, I didn't know Sam drank. And you know, her father pretty much spends a lot of his time at the Blue Whale Bar, which is crazy, right? And so, ever but as Bert comes back. Maggie, you know, with Bert being back, Maggie notices something. Maggie notices that Roger Collins has not come around to her father and really talked to him. And so she's starting to notice. It's like, wait, why are you coming around now? Like, all of a sudden, Bert's back, you're coming out. So she's sort of, like, curious of why Roger is just coming around. Like all of a sudden. And she, she finds it suspicious. And she finds it suspect. So and Burke finds it even more suspect. Because well Maggie. Maggie lets him know about it. Um, she doesn't. That's the one thing I like about Maggie. Maggie herself does not necessarily. Directly try to keep any secrets. Early on. She's very upfront with who she is. And you know. What her situation is. She's not. She's not trying to hide who she is or hide who her dad is. She more wants to know what's going on, you know. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I think that's why her and Vicky really hit it off. Because Vicky herself is out for the truth. Vicky is out for her own truth. And, and in the same sense, so is Maggie. Maggie wants to find out why her dad, you know, <clears throat> and Roger all of a sudden. Roger wants to talk to her dad. And she doesn't buy the excuse about the pain. You know, I think she sells it to him that he, that she does. But I don't think she ever really did. You know, what I found more, another thing I found interesting, Maggie Evans making eyes for Joe, even when she was still dating Carolyn, or when he was still dating Carolyn. You could tell to me, <laughs> What I read from that is Maggie Evans wanted to wait. Okay, that's what I read from that. Maggie Evans wanted to get her some of Joe Haskell, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but um, I really, I, I just love how Catherine Lee Scott, Maggie Evans' character is like, hey, he's, he's, he's good looking. I'm checking him out. And like, you can sort of read her body language. She's making it very, very easy to read. And so, after a short time, after a time, her and Joe begin dating because Joe and Carolyn are no longer an item. Finally, 
finally there's a moment of clarity for Maggie when her father has this you know realization like hey I, I sold those paintings when when her dad tells her what had really happened it's it's one of those moments where you go wow because you know what is going to be her reaction and her reaction is she understood you know she really really understood of why he you know she knew it was wrong she didn't say he she you know but she understood and she's the one who told him you got to tell burke you got to tell burke and eventually you know sam does tell burke because roger is holding out on him on pains you know there's a there's a very interesting fan theory that burke paid that woman to want those paintings i i don't know I mean, that could be, I can't say that's, that's not the case because it could be, you know, you don't know just because she didn't interact. We didn't see her interact with Burke doesn't mean that, that you know, it didn't happen. Um, I mean, it's interesting, right? Because, you know, you never see her afterwards. So it's a possibility. What I really found, you know, Here's a great example of when did when did Barnabas first really see Maggie? And some people might say not till he met her in the in the diner in the cafe. I would disagree. Now, what I mean by meet her, I think he saw her prior to that. I think he sort of assumed, you know, there's a Josette when he knows there's Elizabeth who looks like his mother, when there's Carolyn who looks like Millicent, et etc. Et I think he first saw her when she was sitting in the Blue Whale with Burke and Joe, and Joe is talking about the calf. I think Barnabas is invisible and you can't see him and he's watching her. Now, we don't see that, obviously. We don't see Barnabas watching her. So that's, it's not canon that Barnabas is watching her in that moment. I want to make that clear. It's my opinion that's when Barnabas start, really first saw, saw her. Um, if you guys disagree, you're more than welcome to. Um, but I love the actual first that now their official first meeting is in the diner. But you notice Barnabas isn't shocked by her appearance. Barnabas isn't shocked the way she looks, that she looks like because he's to me, he has seen her before. Um, so Barnabas talks to her. The dogs begin to howl. She gets freaked out. And so she, you know, eventually they stop because he makes them stop. And he, as when he, after he leaves, he leaves his cane. Joe and Maggie take it back to him. And so it's, and Willie, I love how Willie is like suspicious of Barnabas. Why, why was she here? Why, like, no, you, you have something planned. Now, obviously, Barnabas hires Sam Evans to paint his portrait, and we know what this is. This is a plot ploy for Barnabas to kidnap Maggie Evans, and he does. Um, and, you know, I love the fact that Kathleen Lee Scott comes out in that white dress. Even though it's in black and white, you know it's white. That she looks just like Jose. You get why Barnabas saw this, right? Um... I love the fact that I'm doing yard a bunch of times because it's like almost one o'clock in the morning here. Um, but I think the fact that I love the fact that you see uh, when when she's being sort of pushed into Josette, she's 
slams the music up. A Maggie Evans. Bam. I love that scene. I love Captain and Scott for that because it lets you know this is not Josette Dupre, Dupre Collins. This is not Josette Collins. So, with the help of little Sarah, you know, Maggie does make a daring escape. And soon Barnabas learns that she's dead. She's not really dead. Um, I love how Willie, when they when they think Maggie's dead, how Willie is constantly in Barnabas' ear. We killed her. We killed that girl. <laughs> he's like, he's like Jiminy Cricket times extreme. John Carlin is like hard, but we, we, Barnabas, we killed that girl. <laughs> we killed her. Like, we, we, we. We killed that girl. Like, it's the, you know, right there. Um, <laughs> I love John Garland for that. That is so awesome. Um, <laughs> but, so Maggie is in Wincliffe Sanitarium. She's taught, you know, and everybody but Joe, Dr. Woodard, her, Maggie's father, And Dr. Hoffman believes she's, the, they know she's not, they're the only ones who know she's alive. So eventually, you know, Maggie comes back to Collinsport. People are shocked that she's alive, obviously. And, you know, after that we go to 17, you know, Dr. Hoffman and being at Collinswood, she's trying to keep her hypnotized. You know, after we get back through 1795, because yeah, this is a Maggie Evans character retrospective, um, I like I, I like the fact that they start to dream curse with her, because even Angelique sort of sees Josette in her. She looks like Josette, and she does. So, I, I'm going to admit something. I did not like the fact that they... When Victoria left, they just put Maggie Evans in that house. I just felt they could have did something else with her. But, you know, they make her the new governess. Um, she's, uh, you know, she's really interesting. Her character doesn't become dull at all. Um, she's sort of getting taunted by or tortured by the ghost of Quentin, you know. And, you know, that leads into 1897, obviously. Then when we come back, again, Maggie, Maggie is sort of like the target of a lot of things that go on. Uh, the Levi, you know, the Leviathan breathing with Michael and stuff. Um, she really, I think one of the most interesting things is when she's getting attacked by Roxanne Drew. And they want to move her away. Oh, by the way, I skipped over Nicholas Blair, but I'll get to that. But, uh, how, you know, Sebastian Shaw, they have her take her to a mental institution, Wincliffe Sanitarium. But I love how Nicholas is falling head over heels for Catherine Lee Scott, Maggie Evans. I mean, who wouldn't, though? I love that dynamic and how they use that. So, I love how the fact that how they tore apart her and Joe, really. You know, Joe's out of his mind. He's crazy. So, you know, she thinks there's another woman. And in a sense, she's not totally wrong. Um, you know, Angelique is a vampire. I hope they, look, Maggie Evans is a character who's still alive. I hope they bring Kathleen Lee Scott back to the series, like for the new series. If it gets picked up, um, I love, love, love this character. Um, so, I'm sorry if it's not too much of a deep, deep dive. It's again, it's 1 a.m., so I'm tired. So, I'm going to go to bed, guys. You guys have a great, great night.